Alright guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to the first episode of the Federative Republic of Brazil. This is a long-awaited series you guys have been waiting for, and I do apologize for the delay. It's been a very busy month for me, so that is one reason why, but we are finally going to be moving on this series. Just in short, we're going to be calling it Brazil, just because that name is way too long to be really saying it continuously. Um, so we're just going to be calling it the Brazil series, um, but officially we are, it is going to be the Federative Republic of Brazil. So today we're going to get this show on the road. We are starting off as opposition. We are not going to be playing as Jair Bolsonaro. Um, that is a request that I've gotten from a lot of my Brazilian subscribers. And so what we're going to be doing, we're going to be playing as opposition. We're going to be playing as the United Republic Movement of Brazil. Um, as To talk about this, this is going to be the United Republic Movement. It is going to be on the right side of the aisle. We have 2.47 million uh, sympathizers. We got 6.7% in the last elections. We have 40 seats and we have $1.5 million in our budget. So we have 646 days uh, before the election. However, there is an off chance that the elections could be set a little bit earlier, depending on if the if the president of Brazil does schedule uh, early elections because of civil unrest or something like that. However, we're most likely going to be playing until the election. So this is going to be an election episode. You're going to be seeing a lot of time skips, mainly because of the length of time that I have to play to get to the election. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get the uh, show on the road, and we're going to go ahead and look uh, overlook some of the information that we have of the country. So we're going to be talking about Brazil, giving you an introduction of Brazil. Brazil is the largest country in South America, as you can see by uh, surface area. Um, by population, they are number one. By military power, they are number one. By energy production, they are number one. Um, and even by uh, just some economic sectors, they are number one. I mean, for one thing, they are heavily, heavily based on agriculture. Um, we are one of the largest agricultural producers in the world. And uh, the plan for this series is essentially to create a regional power in South America. To get a regional power, we need to first start expanding our influence. We're going to be recreating a regional pact in South America, to, uh, similar to NATO. So it's going to be the Northern Treaty Alliance. Then we're going to have the Southern Treaty Alliance. Some sort of a treaty alliance that I want to create. We're going to be heavily based on foreign policy. We're going to do a lot in terms of of uh, expanding brazil's influence especially in south america we don't have that good of relations with our southern american neighbors however we're going to be heavily influencing the elections of our neighbors um, and we're going to also be creating more trade packs are most likely going to be signing a, tr a free trade agreements with uh, the European Union, with the United States. And we're also going to be aiming to sign uh, free trade agreements with uh, possibly even Russia um, if needed. So it, it's this is also going to be the first series in which it is going to be produced by multiple people. I have Crab Rangoon and uh gabe vogel um you guys definitely know gabe vogel he worked on the uh economic tutorial with me so i do appreciate all the work that uh, gabe has done in the series um so personally to gabe i know i have taken a little bit to make this series so i apologize for that um but anyway let's go ahead and get the show on the road um so this is what the makeup of parliament is looking like we need to obviously expand the amount of seats that we have both in the deputy chamber as well as in the senate so we have nine seats in the senate and uh 40 seats in the deputy chamber so we're going to be doing a lot of uh laws we're going to if we need to we're going to be organizing protests we're going to be effectively playing as the opposition in this gameplay mainly in the first episode we're going to try to make it to the second uh, uh to the to the next year we have elections in 2022 and in real life brazil does have elections in 2022 so if you guys like to pay attention to foreign elections make sure you pay attention to those elections as well so we actually have uh presidential and legislative elections in 
uh, October of 2022. So again, we have about a year and a half from these elections. So let's go ahead and start moving on. We're going to go and see what bill is introduced first. So we have the first bill introduced by the president of Brazil. This is establish the stock of surveillance cameras, the installation of surveillance cameras in public and private spaces. Uh, has in the first instance the purpose of reducing crimes they facilitate the investigative work of the police and then recordings can be also used during criminal trials video surveillance is however very controversial as it can be seen as an invasion of privacy we have 442,000 at the beginning and then we have a government proposal of 460,000 let's go ahead and conduct the survey from both the parliament and the people so we effectively have a lot of support from the deputy chamber and the senate so we're gonna have to go ahead and vote in favor of this um, mainly because i don't want to have a schism with our party so we're gonna go ahead and again vote in favor of that and that's effectively what this is going to be the government has proposed a bill as leader of the opposition party it is your responsibility to take a position on every action ordered by the head of the current leadership you can criticize them in the press, advise your parliamentarians on how to vote. You can even initiate unrest or urge other groups to do so. All right, so that is our action reaction from uh, from our, uh, pre uh, our press secretary, essentially. Um, so we are going to... Um, essentially what we need to do, we need to start gaining support from a lot of the characters. This is going to be heavily central on uh, getting support, uh, politicking our way around. If you don't know what that word means, go ahead and look it up. I'm not going to go into definitions, as, at least for right now. We're going to go ahead and get the National Drivers Club on our side as well. We're going to start meeting with the associations. Uh, so we're going to meet with the AIDS Association as well going to go ahead and do uh national family and then artists we have classical uh, dancer um and then we have the religious community so we have the catholics and then protestants that are present in the federative republic of brazil so we're going to meet with both of them get them on our side it's going to be a week of uh this is going to be basically character week in uh in here so we're gonna also going to be meeting with our intellectuals so we have the psychiatrist, novelist, historian. Maybe get the historian on our side. Um, and then we're going to get some small-scale funding. We're, it's not really going to be that um, lucrative doing that, especially sure. before an election. I so we're going to go ahead and, again, meet with him, making a promise. Um, and then speak mm. highly of me in public. Um, and then end the meeting. And then we have National Drivers Club. Sure. We're just going to basically just be meeting with them. We're yeah. going to be saying like, hey, just having a, some small talk population, um, small talk with them. All right, guys, we are back and we finally have something that we can vote against. So this is the airline ticket tax. He raises it from 19.13% to 20.08%. Uh, this tax is meant to go to humanitarian organizations and to help developing countries uh, to have a better access to medical treatment. It was adopted in 2005 on the initiative of the French and Brazilian presidents. Let's go ahead and pause this game real quick just because we want to uh, make sure that um, we are able to vote against this. Um, so we have the deputy chamber. So our party is against it uh, by about 61% to, that would probably be like 39%. And in the Senate, we are against it 61% to 39%. So we're going to go ahead and tell everyone to vote against this measure. And we will um, not be staging any sort of protest action. And we will see how this pill, bill passes um, in the coming days. So it, it's been a consistent... It's just been a consistent um, uh, sort of... Uh, uh, defunding of the brazilian government from the president of brazil all right just now we have a proposal from jair bolsonaro we're just gonna call him jair instead of jow jo jo joao nislo baro my god um we're gonna go ahead and look at this proposal and he just i think this is a major major slip up for the president of brazil let's go ahead and do a uh and yeah no, damn it Damn it. Oh, man. 
Uh, we, uh, we, we have a little bit of a disagreement, but we're going to go ahead and go with the will of our party because he is doing it by about a quarter of a percent. Um, and he, he is netting the Brazilian economy a good amount of money. However, we do hope that this does uh, result in some sort of a disapproval for uh, the, uh, the president of Brazil. We're going to go ahead and conduct a survey, and we're going to say vote for the piece of legislation. We want um, to make sure that our party does like us. That way we don't see any sort of primarying whenever the Brazilian elections come up. Um, I really want to make sure that uh, we're doing this correctly. Also, by the way, I do have historical election results off. Um, so if whenever the Brazilian elections do come up, you will probably be seeing some sort of weird election result um, compared to real life. So um, that is mainly because the smaller parties are a little, it kind of gives us a better chance at actually winning um, while also playing as the opposition. So it's, uh, so I just wanted to make that clear um at the beginning of this episode we have a major major change in the law in brazil right now so the current value of homosexual rights in the federative republic is that gays can get married to each other however jair bolsonaro does want to move it to civil union let's go ahead and see what the support for that is and wow we do see that the right side and center of the parties um do have some sort of uh, support for this 65 percent of the deputy chamber and 65 percent of the senate uh will uh be voting in favor of uh of retracting marriage from the federative republic i cannot even protest this action because my party will not be able to do that um i'm not going to do me do any sort of voting action on this even though my party would want me to do that that is one thing that i am just not going to do um in this party um it, as well we are playing as a center right as a as a right leaning party it does make sense for us to do it however i just will not be doing that um, but Brazilians out there, what are your thoughts on uh, gay marriage? Do you think that um, it should be allowed? Is it actually allowed in Brazil? Um, and if that were to actually happen, what would your thoughts be on that? And should, um, whenever I do take power, should I reinstitute gay marriage in Brazil? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, police and security service of the head of state. Oh yeah, you're defunding everything else, but you're... Um, uh, Funding your security service. That makes sense, Jair. I'd be. I. Is that. Is that so? Do you. Well, I just kind of screwed that up. <laughs> All right, we are back and we have a major proposal from Jair Bolsonaro. We have the determining of the powers of the parliament. And uh, so the current value is. Uh, what? Oh, God. Jesus Christ. Uh, United Republic movement. We can actually vote against this. And this won't even pass. So basically, it's the current values, vote laws, but no motions and no confidence. But it's not even a circled value. It's just like it just proposes itself. That's interesting. But at least we can actually get the guy to lose approval. And we are actually going to um initiate an action for your party and we're going to do demonstrations in cities across the country to protest this action and uh let's go ahead and see what happens and yep we do have 50,000 people that are uh mobilizing to protest against this bill um and that actually netted us 11 percent approval and we get a lot of approval mainly because of human rights and your arguments are convincing you're right though enough debate it is time for action i will liaise with our supporters to coordinate the movement so we have 50,000 people across the country that have mobilized in support of our party's actions against the president of brazil and we do see that jair bolsonaro now has 22 percent approval as of right now in uh in the country so we actually see that our approval has gone up and his approval has just tanked over the past couple of days so that is a very good news for our party. We will actually come over here and look at the census order, a new census poll. And we will 
um, do that. We'll go to the next day, and then we will see. The protest went well. The numbers were what we expected. It shows what we are capable of and gives the current leadership something to think about. Yeah, it does. All right, so let's go over to... So I guess that takes two days to actually complete. And... Boom, boom, boom. Look, and we see United Republic Movement. Let's go! 34%! in the uh, latest voting intention poll so we have 34 uh, percent for our party um we have the brazilian social front front at 16 percent, 24 percent for the communists and 15 uh, percent for the citizens movement and what about the party that is already in power as of right now they actually are not polling at all right now so it's actually the pay actually okay they're right here 0.02 point two percent 0.2%. Oh my god. Uh, the extreme rights. 30, 30 million sympathizers that voted for the guy in uh, the previous election. I believe it was 2018. And and wow, that is that is just unbelievable. Unbelievable, man. You just screwed your election chances unless you can come around and stop this from happening. All right, so we lose a little bit of approval. Purchasing power, I guess that's because I uh, proposed that we vote in favor of it. It is now July 2021. We could see early elections, which is really what I'm hoping for. Kind of makes this episode a little bit shorter than it needs to be. Um, and then work help for seniors. This guy, this guy, like this guy, we have a lot of work to do whenever we get into office because this uh, Jair is just defunding so much, especially whenever it comes to handicapped and whenever it comes to uh, anything that has to do with old people. He just really does not like old people and he's really screwing over this country. Let's go ahead and check on the COVID cases as of right now. We have 253,000 active cases, and the guy, Brazil, uh, the president of Brazil, is also lessening the restrictions and is most likely contributing to a, another wave of, uh, of uh, uh, severe cases right now. We do have severe cases under 10,000, so we have 501,000 deaths uh, to COVID and 253,000 active cases in the United States. We have 89,000 active cases and 582,000 uh, deaths. So Brazil is about to overtake the United States as the number one place for COVID deaths as of right now. And that is just that is just too much that we uh, it's, just, it's just disappointing to see that happen. Hopefully, by the time we do take office, it's going to be at a manageable level. All we have to do, enact a couple of laws, order a bunch of masks, get people to wear masks, open up the economy, and then we will see that COVID will be dealt with and also get the, the vaccine distributed. So we have another proposal from Jair. We have 293 minimum wage, uh, and then it, uh, he's lowering it to 287. Let's go ahead and get a poll right now. We do see that parliament is severely against this, and we are going to, uh, again, get uh, everyone to vote against this measure. And then we are going to uh, um, organize urgent organization to initiate a protest. And then we're also going to come over here and do a demonstration. We're going to do a sit-in, actually. We're going to try to do a sit-in against this protest. Um, and then so we see, yes, there are some issues we are unhappy with. We don't think that we're on staging a protest action. Our campaigners won't support us at this time, so I won't ask them to. All right, we have a brand new criticism of religion. Article 20 of the International Covenant of Civil Rights and Political Rights adopted by the UN states that any advocacy of racial hatred that constitutes an incitement to discrimination, hostility, or violence shall be prohibited by law. And legislature can find himself can hinder freedom of expression if he judges that it is a threat to the community. So he wants to move it from freedom of expression to perspectful of beliefs. So let's see if a parliament even. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now, Parliament? Are you kidding me? That is stupid. Oh my God, I'm not even going to do a voting recommend. We're going to do this once, and we are going to uh, vote against. No, how how much does our party right like it? Eighty percent. Wow, 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 wow. We're going to do no voting recommendation as of right now, but I am pretty sure that's going to tank his approval rating even more. It's going to be very hard for this guy to even get into, uh, 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 even get to like 5% approval at this point. Like, 
I mean, I might jinx myself on that, so. Um, very, very unfortunate, unfortunate laws that are being in, 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 in place. Um, just, again, a lot of work to do whenever it comes to uh, making episode two. Um, it's just, it's a very, 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 very cringe to watch this. And I know Gay Vogel is cringing while he watches this as well. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make our way to the next week. We are now less than one year from the election. Uh, so more and more we make ourselves to the election. And we're doing very good in terms of the approval um, and the voter intention in the next election. So this passes. New Value is now respectful of beliefs. We're going to change that back to freedom of expression whenever it comes uh, to us, whenever it comes to our desk. And just now, he just is continuing to <laughs> repress freedoms in the Federative Republic. Um, we do see that our party will actually be against this. We may actually be able to get this to um, ha at least stop this from happening. We're going to go ahead and vote against this. This is the law on the level of re religious freedom. And again, this goes against Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And it goes from complete freedom to tolerate and monitor all minority religions. And we are actually going to try to... Um, we're gonna, uh, can we initiate an action? Could we, we're gonna criticize the law to the media. We're gonna do that. Um, secondary education, he builds some schools. Wow, cool, thanks. But that is just undertaken or overcut by the, uh, by what you just proposed, Jair. So, uh, have fun. Have fun, like, uh, retiring somewhere in the middle of the Amazons just you're just you're just digging your hole even deeper man as i said as i said there was the off chance that jair bolsonaro was going to be thrown out of office um and that new elections were going to be scheduled so we do see that uh new elections have been scheduled in the federative republic of brazil makes this episode just a tiny bit shorter than it needs to be so that is good so at the very end of 2021 the primaries have just begun, Mr. President. These internal campaigns and the political parties will enable us to know the official candidate who will run in the elections in 67 days. Fear not, the party will support you as a candidate and the militant mass will follow our choice blindly. Your, your television broadcast is scheduled for tomorrow morning from the party HQ. Let me go ahead and see if I can do any of this. Uh, and that is not allowed, but, 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 but. Uh, campaign cost investment budget available. Jesus Christ, we almost have zero money that we can do for a fundraising campaign. However, following the leadership's fall from power, the nomination of an interim leadership to conduct ongoing business, fresh elections will soon be held. You could use this period of unrest as an opportunity to rise to head of state. All right, that is the um, uh, our press secretary coming to us or a private secretary coming to us uh talking about the resignation of jair bolsonaro we're gonna go ahead and invest just a tiny bit into into actually we're gonna do that the moment we actually get this money so we're gonna go ahead and do a fundraising campaign and then we're gonna go to the businessman and we're going to ask him for money so we're gonna go get him on christmas eve give us a little christmas present won't you billionaire and let's go ahead and nope. offer him some coffee offer a champagne glass tell him he is yeah. radiant and we're not going to ask him to become our lover invite yeah. him to speak a, speak good of me in public and ask him I to support us at the next elections and then ask yeah. him to fund our party so then we have the election campaign the action campaign has officially begun. All candidates are now known. I would strongly recommend that you quickly outline your electoral program and actively participate in the campaign. I would suggest to keep some of your most popular campaign promises to yourself for the moment, and then you can unveil them during the televised debate, which we are going to do. So we have 53% approval against the head of state's 6%, and we will be waiting for a poll uh, very shortly in the coming days. All right, and let's go ahead and go to the next day. Antonio Silva declares himself. Oh my God, where's his body? My fellow citizens, 
It is after intense reflection and multiple consultations that I decided to run for president. Wow, that was a very interesting speech from Antonio Silva. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. So we have Pedro Jotti in second place. Uh, according to the just behind you so he has 12 percent. can we see what our uh so antonio silva 15 percent, 12 percent, 11 11 11 11 so we have a lot that we can do uh in terms of um we need we, we have a lot that we need to do in terms of this could we possibly form a coalition so let's go over to here and see where is parliament so if i wanted to form a coalition we could probably form one with the league of pioneering democrats and the union of the democratic rights now if i wanted to do that union of democratic rights where are you so this is udr that's six percent and then we have the center formation that we could also do a lot of left-wing parties are right behind us we're also waiting for a lot of money to come in. So we have that billionaire that just gave us money. Um, and then we're going to ask for more money uh, very soon. So let's go ahead and do this in Rio de Janeiro. So we're going to do performance hall. We're going to do that for Wednesday. And we are going to ask. We're going to go over to Parliament. We're going to go over to Parliament. No. It was um it was religion it was religion so immigration religion da -da 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 -da, political parties free multi-party system um where was it religion is right here so determine the level of religious freedom that did not pass but we're going to state power no we're gonna to have to find it later on if you have doubts about your victory in the elections a coalition of political parties could be the answer for your worries uh, candidates from coalition would withdraw and move your vote to your single candidate of course it would be necessary for you to commit to a common program and expect to grant ministerial posts once in power it's up to you and then running tactics um but in the presidential system i mean isn't it isn't it possible for me to do that without even risking uh, losing power because the because we're a presidential system all i need to do all i need to have them do is to drop out of the election so political parties let's go ahead and start meeting with some political parties we're going to try to see if we can get them to drop out of the election uh so we're going to do the center formation we're going to do this so we're going to look at the people who barely have any chance of winning in this next election and we're, we're going to meet with them as well as schedule some of these campaign rallies and we're gonna do we're gonna do regina we do de janeiro we're gonna do sao paulo and then we're gonna do performance hall most of these are gonna be performance hall venues congratulations your campaign agenda is excellent indicators to the entire electorate i'm sure we'll be getting a lot of votes and so the center formation i'd be offer a glass you're... tell her she's charming i don't want it's... you to become a mistress yet and I don't believe I am in a position. Oh my god, she actually dropped out. Let's go. Don't pat. Let's go, man. Let's go. Thank you so much, Center Formation, for dropping out of this election. I will not regret it. Tell you she's charming. That's Milton's can be proud, but draw. Please. I don't believe. And we get the ULDL to drop out of the election. Don't. And so we have now had two parties that have dropped out of the election and will help us immensely in this next election we will see what this next poll will do for us and we're also going to meet with the businessman and we're going to get him to support us in uh financially <laughs> at least and we're also going to invest a little bit of our money into uh cyber protection so let's go ahead and do about five hundred and ninety thousand dollars into uh, uh cyber protection all right, and uh, expose a scandal involving a key figure. We're not we're not going to be playing that dirty, at least right now. Not until we're in office. Not until we no are in office will we I play dirty. Tell him he's ready. You're not bad. Yeah. Um, you're richest and most gorgeous, and ask him mm. to find a party. Hope that's not going to be an option. <clears throat> so we have 50 days until the election. Campaign Antonio Silva, the party, the the, the polls favorite, twenty five percent in favor of our candidacy, and we are now the top ranking uh, uh, 
candidate in this election. So let's see, the BPU has 8.3%. If we actually get a lot of people to drop out. Let's go ahead and try to get these center parties to drop out. Um, that will still help us immensely. Um, we're going to meet with both center parties today. Um, so this is effectively making a coalition without really having to do any ministerial promises or anything like um, that. This is, this is going very, very good for us. This is 59% approval. We could be just be smooth sailing into this election. Um, we haven't even been doing that many promises as of right now. We don't. We haven't even formed a coalition. We haven't even done that much right now. Um, and this was the latest poll, 24% as of right now. We're going to try to unify a lot of these uh, right-wing parties. Could we get the BPU to just drop out? I think the BPU would be the hardest. There's one more right-wing party that we can actually get. Do we want do we want them to drop out do we want them to eh, let's try let's try and union of the democratic rights she's charming militants can be proud don't, don't panic i'll look into it so we get her to drop out as well interesting um i wish i could actually withdraw that because that's kind of brought down our support a little bit but if we can at least become number two and at least win that uh, uh, debate, like all we need to do is just we're, we're waiting to get our retirement promises and our minimum wage promises for the debate. That's all we're trying to do right now. And we're going to do this for Monday of next week, and then we're not going to really be touching this for a little bit, a little bit. Um, so let's go ahead and call for the rich to pay their fair share. <clears throat> we have a lot of rich people. That's a lot of money from just the rich alone. Um, so campaign promise. We're going to do 30.5%. And that was supported by the people, not really by the party. And that got us a little bit more approval. So that kind of made up for the loss of the criticism of religion law. So I'm going to go ahead and still pass that criticism of religion law. You have put together a good electoral program. I think it corresponds to what our members and supporters are looking for, and they will be with us on voting day. So we have, we're still waiting for the poll to update from the UDR dropout. And when is this election? It's going to be in 38 days. <clears throat> and this is going to be on literally the second to last day of, of, uh, of uh, February. So we have it in about a month that this election will take place. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fast forward a little bit and we're gonna continue to do a little, couple more promises. We'll go ahead and go through what we do, um, if I do anything. And we're gonna be kinda get our politicking um, around. We're gonna politic our way around. 30% approval in this latest poll. So let's go ahead and check. This is the UDR is apparently still in the race for some reason. This is a politic. This is the UDR, I believe. Yeah, this is the UDR. I thought the UDR dropped out. But all these left-wing parties are gaining some support. But we can at least... Can we can we influence these guys to drop out? These are kind of our enemies for right now. Our, our nemesis. So let's sure. go ahead and offer him a coffee. Tell him he was radiant. Yeah. Let's get him to withdraw. I'm sorry. Yeah, of course. How, how corruptible is he? He is very corruptible. But I'm pretty sure even if I were to uh, do any sort of bribe against him, he'd immediately snitch on me. Good. Very, very good. Uh, very good performance as of right now. Brazil maintaining. So there's still a lot of restrictions as of right now from the government. Um, is this guy still? Yes, he's still a part of the... He got a little bit of approval and then just tanked the way and he's kind of been gradually going up maybe because of his uh, epidemic management but still very 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 bad um let's do 27 days from the election well this will cost 1.1 million dollars we're going to do another campaign fundraiser just because we need to milk the amount of money that we can get from uh this election because the more money we get the more we can kind of use it to invest in separate security uh, you know very well that other elections will take place simultaneously with the presidential elections in which will determine the National Assembly's new composition. On this field, the battle will also rage. The results should naturally be consistent with the presidential election. We will analyze them in full detail. 
So I believe that uh, Brazil has a second round system, so we're going to have the first no, thanks. round, My and then we're going to have the second round um, yeah. in the game. So encourage him to support me at the elections and then fund my yes. party, please. That'll give us maybe another $10 million that we can play with. Um, best sort of advice that I can give you guys for uh, election before this political ideology tutorial comes out. Um, essentially, the closer to the election you are, the more money you will get from these fundraising campaigns, from the fundraising campaign and from the billionaire. The closer to the election you are, the more money you can get. So that is my advice for you. 12% uh, is uh, out of the top three. So we have 28% to 22% um, to 15%. So good, 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 very good. Um, let's go ahead and use one of my, one of my roundhouse kicks, I like to call them. Um, we're going to call this on Monday and we're going to do, uh, we're going to lower some tax right now. We're going to lower a tax. We're going to lower the petroleum and energy product tax. We're going to lower it to 0.186. Campaign promise. That should actually get some approval. So that'll get approval from our our uh, public opinion, but not from our party, unfortunately. But that gets us a little bit more approval going into this debate. Um, we really just need to make sure that we are the number one party going into the debate. Um, if we're the number two party, we just need to do a very exceptional performance. We're trying to not use our roundhouse kicks, which the roundhouse kick is essentially the minimum wage and the, the pension, the pension, that's what you call it. Um, opening of the Winter Olympics in Beijing and our petroleum product tax is disappointing. We're counting on you to set different goals and targets that are more in line with our electorate. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand that. <laughs> Um, but we're trying to win this election. We're trying to win. So let's go ahead and play the play the game in 19 days to this election. So very, very, very good uh, performance as of right now. Could be doing a little bit better. Could be doing a little bit better. Um, but I'm very excited for these results. And once the debate comes and goes, we will most likely be going away with at least 50% approval. And we are now uh, 13 days from the election. What I actually want to do, businessman, and will help us boost. So we got $8 million. What we're going to do right now is we're going to launch another fundraising campaign. And this is 10 days. It'll take about 14 days. We'll be seeing two weeks from launching. So about 14 days, about four days after the election, we will see uh, the results of that campaign. And we should get at least a couple million dollars. We will recoup our loss from the initiation of that campaign. And we're going to change the date of this guy to right before the debate. We're now on election day. Presidential elections begin tomorrow. The elections begin tomorrow morning across the country, Mr. President. Some 152 million voters are called in to express their opinions throughout the ballot, through the ballot boxes. We'll have the results the day after tomorrow. So we are now one day from the election, February 27th, and then February 28th, election day. So we now have the election results, and we'll go ahead and see what happens. Good evening. The majority of votes have been counted, and we can now give you the first round results. Take a look at this. All right, and we get nearly a quarter of the election results. Silva and Tony are. We are uh, now Mr. going Antonio to go Silva. live to one of the two winning candidates at their campaign headquarters. My friends, although we are still waiting for the final results to be confirmed, we do know that I am definitely through to the second round. I would like to thank everyone who has supported me. But I must add that the fight is far from over. And we must continue campaigning through to the runoff election. We must now reach out further afield 
to the men and women who share our ideals and refuse to be held back by my opponent's inept political program. Thank you. So very strong words from our from uh, Antonio Silva. He says that our uh, our, our opponent is inept, uh, th- just throwing insults. A very dirty politics being played right now. And as I said earlier in this episode, we do have a two round system, so that means that we are able to um, advance to the second round, and we're going to probably be able to uh, win in a much. Uh, better fashion than in that very cluttered election campaign a turnout of 53 percent in this election a very 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 low turnout well 53 percent hopefully we can get turnout to go up in our uh, re-election campaign indicates that 39 percent of the population is not very interested in the elections and not see any difference between the various enlisted candidates that is a very very low turnout number uh, for this election. So let's go ahead and no. offer a campaign. I... Speak highly of me and Rich is the most gorgeous and ask him to fund a party. Um, so let's go ahead and go to this uh, debate. Good evening. The highly anticipated debate will begin in a few moments' time. The candidates are ready. Naturally, we will ensure that they are given equal speaking time. This will be closely monitored. We have also set up a new instant polling system to gauge viewers' reactions to the candidates' arguments and, in some ways, define the winner of the debate. Let's get to the first part of the program. Underway now. The candidates... We'll take it in turns to comment on various issues of importance to our fellow citizens. So, what's your opinion on the matter? All right, and we get our first campaign promise that we can propose. Let's go ahead and do... Let's look, let's look, let's look. I was going to choose this very carefully. Um, I think we're going to add... This is kind of like a... Um, more of a weird... Everyone really likes this for some reason. So we're going to do an additional tax on the pornography industry. So we're going to go ahead and get an additional $150 million off of this. Like any household, the state must be fully aware of the budgetary reality and in every circumstance, search for an improvement to its situation that will reassure our economic partners and international markets. Rather than reducing public spending that is directly detrimental to the services delivered to citizens, the increase in tax revenues has the advantage of afterward allowing an arbitrage on the use of this wealth. Thank you. And moving on, what would you like to say about this? And he says that he wants to introduce a higher tax on industrial pollution. The environmental safeguard, the transition towards a green economy, energy change, preservation of biodiversity. Yes, ecology will be at the heart of my priorities. Thank you. Let's move on to another issue. So, what's your opinion on the matter? We're talking about culture here, and he increases the literature budget by two stars. That is $289 million additional funding for our culture. Our culture is renowned and envied the world over. You can count on me to protect and develop it. It's crucial to us in all its diversity. Very well. Coming over to you, where do you stand on this? Anything you want to add? Not really. Nah, we will come over here. Construction. Do we want to build anything? We're going to do an additional amount of money for our museums. Our culture is renowned and envied the world over. You can count on me to protect and develop it. It's crucial to us in all its diversity. Thank you. It's now time for the second part of the program where the candidates will be able to ask each other questions directly. Well, I would like some clarification on this matter, which you've bandied about, in my opinion. 
throughout the campaign. All right, so he's asking us about what we want to do. We're going to go ahead and introduce access for handicapped, which the previous president, Jair Bolsonaro, got rid of in his tenure. So we're going to go ahead and increase the access. It is our duty to emphasize the right to disability compensation in our society. With me, the state will be deeply committed to supporting people with disabilities. That, too, don't forget, is what national solidarity is all about. All right, and let's go ahead and ask him a question about, 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 I would like to hear you talk about this subject, as I feel you've been quite vague as to where you stand. All right, he wants to build an oil well. Let's see how that fares. The development of fossil fuels is the clear medium-term solution to safeguarding our energy needs, because it will be a long time before renewable energies reach an efficient level of production. I will remain focused on this and defend the fossil sector. Thank you. We are now coming to the end of the debate. I would like to ask both candidates to wrap up now and perhaps share one final promise with us. All right, and he proposes regulate the rent increases. Limits on rent increases can halt building speculation and price inflation and so has an effect on purchasing power. Trade-off is reduced investment in rental housing and an an impact on the building sector in the long term, more or less. He wants to go from no regulations to index-linked rent increases, and that'll uh, cost the state about $9.5 million. Purchasing power drives economic growth because consumption stimulates demand, and this creates investment. Our fellow citizens will soon be back spending money in the shopping malls because I guarantee they will have the money to do so. All right, that put us back just a tiny bit. So he actually got a lot of approval from the people off of that promise. So we're going to go ahead and deliver our roundhouse kick. Now that is where we try to decide which roundhouse kick we're going to deliver. We're going to either deliver the minimum retirement pension uh, uh, change or we're going to deliver the roundhouse kick which is called the minimum wage. So I believe that they're actually set at the same thing, $300. So let's go ahead and ask that Parliament will be delivering about $350 of minimum wage, higher minimum wage, uh, for the people of Brazil. Purchasing power drives economic growth. Because consumption stimulates demand, and this creates investment. Out. Thank you once again to both of you for the clean and fair debate. And to all our valued viewers, I hope this has helped you gain a greater perspective on our candidates. Good evening. Our instant polling system has designated a winner. Good evening. I like how he says good evening twice. Anyway, that was the debate. That was the debate. Um, Just a little bit of background of uh, footage. I actually had a bug that came in in the first time, so I had to repeat that uh, debate like twice. Um, So that is the debate. Now we go to the second round of election results. Can we figure out when that will be? We don't know yet. Um, But let's go ahead and... Put the play button on and results of the TV debate. I have the poll results. Nearly 65% of viewers found your participation convincing. So we conquered the public as to say the game. Uh, Legislative election. uh, Antonio Silva's party is the winner. Is the winner of the legislative election. I would like to thank you all those who renewed their trust in me. I will strive to prove myself worthy of such an honor once again. The voters indeed voted in favor of the United Republic Movement's president with 301 seats at the National Assembly, which implies a comfortable majority. So we're going to go ahead and pause this real quick. $8.7 million transfer from the billionaire and 61% of the vote intention in this next uh, round of elections. We are going to be winning this election by a very comfortable majority. Uh, We actually lost a little bit of money in that fundraiser, so that is unfortunate. 65% of per viewers found your participation in the debate more convincing. 
Um, so let's go ahead and go over to Parliament. Parliament, Parliament. Oh boy, man, we are in a majority of Parliament. Uh, so we have 301 seats in the Deputy Chamber. And in the Senate, we have 48 seats in the Senate. We have one seat for the BPU and one seat for the center-right Democratic Party. So that is out of 81 seats. We have 48 seats. We have more than a majority, and we have nearly a super majority in the parliament um, in both chambers. That is insane. So we are just we have barely any anything that is standing against us in this tenure that we are going to have. We have a five-year tenure in the Federative Republic, I believe. So that is going to be a, a very comfortable reign that we are going to have over Brazil to institute our laws, to institute our mandate. So this is absolutely, we are entering this next round of elections and into the next five years in a legitimate mandate. All right, it's presidential elections. The second round begins tomorrow. Here is the last upright line, Mr. President. Tomorrow, the second round of elections takes place, and we will therefore be paying attention to the results the day after tomorrow. So we will be looking at the election results on the 14th of March. So let's go ahead and go to the 14th, and we will be having these election results. Good evening. The time has come. The preliminary results are in, and we can now reveal the second round results. All right, we got Jade Pedro against Antonio Silva. Let's go ahead and see where his margin stops. We're most likely going to be getting away with at least 60%. Wow, 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 wow. That is, we're going to be at 59, 61% in this election. Wow, we are now going to go insane. live. To the new head of state at their campaign headquarters. It is with emotion and gratitude that I thank those who have renewed their confidence in me. I know that I will prove worthy of their confidence without dismissing those who did not vote for me. Because it is a united people that I want to govern in order to foster a mighty nation. ahead and look at these uh, national census bureau results 60.9 percent in the final score 39.1 percent in for our opposition so let's go ahead and look so we have score for political program we won in the political program popularity televised debate from groups and from regions so we won i'm pretty sure we won almost every single region in the federative republic we won artists, associations, athletes, uh, the clergy, <laughs> well, the clergy by uh, overwhelming, wow, that is 92.2%. Uh, we won sects, we won unions, um, so let's see, we did not win drivers, we won, uh, no, we won, we did not win consumers, we did not win anti-racism. So we're going to be working to get them to support us in the next election. We could probably win by a much wider margin. So the Catholics voted for us 100%. That is amazing. And the Protestants voted for us 85 to 15. And let's go ahead and look to see what the regions voted for us. So we won every single region as of right now and we actually won them by a very overwhelming majority in every single region except for the bahia region and uh rio de janeiro was very close so look at that um and then santa santa catarina was very close sergipe sao paulo we're very close. So it was 51 to 49 on a lot of those close races. Um, but let's go ahead and go until we are inaugurated as the head of state. And invest your ceremony for Antonio Silva. Antonio Silva went to the presidential palace while on the orchestra played the national anthem. He then gave a speech before the flags. Ladies and gentlemen, on this day, when I assume the responsibility of the highest position of the state, I feel the drive of ambition to make my fellow countrymen more united, more equal, and to make Brazil a prosperous nation. That is the speech 
from uh, Antonio Silva on March 17th, 2022. And let's go ahead and go to the next day. And we are now head of state of the Federative Republic of Brazil. That is episode one of the Federative Republic. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. We will be returning back very soon for episode two in which we will start instituting our laws. We will be instituting our foreign policy. We will start laying the groundwork for what is to come. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you guys like this, go ahead and leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you guys enjoyed this episode, leave a comment down below what you guys want to see in this series. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching the Federative Republic of Brazil, episode one. And I'll see you guys in the next one.